Um, hello and welcome to our series of short recordings addressing the people, process and technology necessary to implement sustainability reporting. I am Chao Xiaomei, Head of Corporate Reporting Insights Sustainability at ACCA, and I have with me here today my colleagues, Rachel Johnson, ACCA's Head of Risk Management and Corporate Governance, and Alexandra Saronina Kirilova, ACCA's Head of SME. In today's session, we will focus on the process and responsibility for sustainability reporting, which are covered in stages one, two, and seven of our sustainability reporting cycle. We will also explore what will most likely change about an organization's governance framework to support its sustainability reporting, as well as how a less well-resourced organization might cope with such changes. Now, one important point to keep in mind when implementing sustainability reporting is that collaboration is vital. And this cuts across the whole organization. Whether we're talking about senior management, technologists, human resources, talent developers, and of course, professional accountants, all have a role in engaging with the stages of the sustainability reporting cycle, which underpins the preparation of sustainability related information and reports. Professional accountants in particular are well-placed to lead organizations along their sustainability reporting journeys while keeping ethics at the front of mind. So as a first step, what do you need to do? Well, you start with what you're already familiar with, leverage your organization's existing financial reporting process. This is about getting your house in order and thinking through what you need to add, change or remove for your organization to provide relevant, useful, comparable, reliable, and consistent information to enable primary and other users informed decision-making. Also, think about which functions along your organization's financial reporting process have a role or should have a role in preparing sustainability-related information from risk management, finance, human resources, technology, operational to supply chain management. This includes figuring out who does what. Who in your organization along this process is responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed? Identify, decide, and document who these people are, as this will create clarity throughout your organization by ensuring that everyone is always on the same page. So for a smaller or less well-resourced organization, this is likely to be simpler. The reporting process might be the same as for financial reporting or be completely outsourced. Or perhaps the roles of those who are responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed may be consolidated into one person or a small number of people. Next, let's talk about the reporting landscape. Copy reporting applies a building blocks approach, layering sustainability related and other disclosures on top of financial disclosures, some of which will be mandatory. Disclosure requirements might be industry specific or apply at international, regional and or national jurisdiction levels. But how do you know which reporting requirements apply? You will need to first Understand your organization and its environment. For example, you can ask questions like, which jurisdiction does the organization carry out its activities in? What legal forms does the organization operate through? Or which industries are the organization involved in? And then with this understanding, identify which reporting frameworks are relevant and what guidance exists for each of these. So with this information at hand, you will be able to identify and focus on your organization's priority areas, which reporting requirements would be most important for your organization. For example, your organization might prioritize mandatory requirements, but also consider other non-mandatory requirements which can unlock potential synergies in the short, medium, and long term. For much of this stage, a smaller or less well-resourced organization might choose to collaborate with other similar organizations. Now let's move on to how to implement what we have talked about. 
Successful implementation of any process, in particular one that brings changes as major as sustainability reporting, will depend on three key enablers. Creating a formal implementation plan, using technology as an enabler, and working with people as enablers. For today, we will focus on the first element, which is creating a formal implementation plan. This plan needs to consider elements such as, one, systems development, where you'll need to set appropriate timescales to build the necessary systems and processes to support them. Two, enhancing standard operating practices and procedures to incorporate timescales for sustainability-related data collection and verification. For example, specify when data needs to be updated centrally at a designated time so that your organization's reporting team will know when to look out for updated or new requirements. In setting such timescales, you might find it useful to align this timing with timelines for financial, sustainability-related, or other corporate reporting. This can help build an internal discipline for data collection among your organization's various reporting teams. Three, establishing a reporting hub. Comprising an interdisciplinary team of individuals charged with developing and maintaining your organization's overall corporate reporting process. Now, what's important here is that this hub needs to have the right levels, authority, and capabilities to set organization-wide minimum standards, be it relating to controls, data collection, or evidence requirements. This includes whether data collection happens at site, industry, country, or regional levels. And last but not the least, holding awareness sessions for internal and external stakeholders, and training for those expected to use the new systems. I'd like to emphasize here that organizations need to take non-financial reporting just as seriously as financial reporting. Ultimately, regardless of how good the systems or processes in place are, they will only be as good as the people who input the data. So make sure that the capability and the rigor are built into your organization's processes to ensure that the data input into the system is of quality and can be used to meet your organization's reporting and decision-making needs. And so now I'd like to turn to my colleagues to share their insights. Rachel, could you please share with us what would most likely change about an organization's governance framework to support its sustainability reporting? Yes, for sure. Thanks, May. Um... So many organizations still tend to fall into the trap of treating sustainability as a compliance exercise rather than focusing on the outcomes that such principles reporting requirements are meant to engender. So we really need to be conscious of not taking on a tick the box approach, but ensuring that sustainability matters are ingrained in the organization's governance and culture so that everyone is singing from the same song sheet and everyone has a role to play. So I would say this starts with leadership commitment. This commitment should be reflected in the organization's mission, values, and strategic objectives with sustainability and in integrated into overall decision-making processes. And when it comes to establishing clear policies and procedures specifically related to sustainability reporting, the most important thing is how they are communicated because the timeliness and assurance processes must be a collaborative process, as you said earlier, if you are to ensure the integrity of the disclosures. Engaging with stakeholders is also key in helping your organization identify material sustainability issues and stakeholder expectations. Getting the company's sustainability reporting and the development of sustainability goals, targets, and reporting strategies into the conversation is really what I say is the secret sauce of success. Of course, you also have to link it with risk management. This includes assessing environmental, social, and governance risks and incorporating them into decision-making making processes, but as value added, not as a cost-cutting or firefighting exercise. Internal controls need constant monitoring and strong oversight from the top. And when I say the top, I mean the board. 
data validation, verification, and, and internal audit processes to monitor, compli monitor compliance with reporting standards and regulations are really vital to a company's health. Also, there's capacity building. As you said, training is so important. So providing such training initiatives for employees ensures that they have necessary skills and knowledge to effectively collect, analyze, and report on sustainability issues. And also it's very important, I say, to ensure that that training is a collaborative effort and collective, not segregated. Continuous improvement should be a shared goal where everyone works towards a mutual interest. This may involve conducting regular reviews of the reporting practices, um, asking what the, the employees think about them and why they do them, and just seeking feedback from all stakeholders and implementing incentives too to address any, um, any gaps or identified weaknesses. So overall, I would say a governance framework that integrates sustainability into core business practices and fosters accountability, transparency, transparency and continuous improvement. They, these are what is, all, what is all critical to support effective sustainability reporting. Thank you, Rachel, that was really interesting. However, we do recognize that less well-resourced organizations might need to take a different approach. Alexa, I'd like to come to you next to share your perspective on how a less well-resourced organization might cope with these changes. Thank you, May. Well, we all know that indeed uh, it can be quite different for small organizations that do not have dedicated sustainability teams and in general are quite resourced for and uh, it's sometimes quite difficult for them to come up with a structured approach to sustainability reporting. <laughs> However, we all know that uh, there is a growing pressure also on small businesses to disclose the information on sustainability of their operations. In particular, it's relevant for those companies, smaller companies who are making part of uh, larger of supply chains of larger organizations. And uh, well, as, as well, you discussed that process before, May and Rachel, large complex enterprises can dedicate specialized team and roles for covering sustainability data collection, controls and reporting. But for smaller companies uh, who are operating with the leaner teams, with smaller teams and budgets, very importantly, uh, um, it, this needs to be approached differently. It's clearly not possible for a smaller uh, business to bear a full burden of developing a robust sustainability reporting governance models from scratch, and they need to rely a lot on cooperation. In smaller firm, uh, you, you can have a handful of individuals handling the majority of governance duties and of governance duties also related to ESG disclosures. Those uh, most probably will be the CFO having a very important uh, one of central roles there, sustainability lead or sustainability champion again, if there is such a role within a smaller company and members of the executive team. And rather than siloing responsibilities across a large matrix and roles um, around sustainability data, target setting and external uh, accountability, this often overlaps and requires uh, cross-functional collaboration between the executive team, the CFO, and uh, again, a uh, sustainability lead or sustainability champion. And of course, there are upsides and downsides of that process. The upside of this is that it can enable more integrated thinking and alignment between a company's ESG narrative and a company's overall strategy, because it's all being uh, handled in by, by, a, by a smaller team. But it also concentrates more work in on fewer plates. So it's important uh, to, to consider how this can be optimized and uh, how the small organizations can creatively extend the capacity through, for example, shared resources, through partnerships, through digitalization. And here, collaboration, again, as both of you, May and Rachel mentioned, is very important. But here, uh, we can look at collaboration also externally and it can be collaboration with industry peers, with professional associations and experts. And again, as, as we all know, accountants can have a very uh, central role here, often seen as trusted advisors by small businesses. 
uh, for example, if those are external accountancy uh, practices or external accountants working as uh, portfolio CFOs for several businesses, they can help uh, leading collaboration initiatives that pull efforts across organizations and enables groups of small organizations to optimize their um, uh, sustainability reporting process. So by, by partnering with sustainability consultants and cloud uh, solution providers, accountants can facilitate access to, for example, specialized expertise, digital tools that are absolutely not feasible for smaller businesses to adopt alone. And we can see more and more accountants actually joining their forces in working groups uh, to, to share expertise. And uh, while also we know that some of the accountancy bodies are building those working groups to build the uh, accountants' knowledge, we have some of those groups also at ACCA. We have the practice room discussion group uh, where we bring together the accountants to to share their knowledge, to learn from each other, but also to facilitate their access to practical tools that's being developed by ACCA. I'm sure you can all uh, take a look at the ACCA website and uh, find those resources that can hopefully be helpful for you. So this is to say that, yes, indeed, it's, it's, it's quite different in small organizations. And this is a unique opportunity for accountants be it accountants working within smaller businesses, CFOs, or external practitioners to, to support SMEs in interfacing with multiple organizations and industry, which empower them to support best practices uh, and access those pra best practices that are ready for scalable adoption by a uh, smaller business. Of course, no company, no small company needs to uh, reinvent wheel here. And I know that when we start discussing sustainability reporting for small companies, sometimes it can seem uh, quite overwhelming. But oh, if there is a proactive leadership position, if uh, there is a very open-minded um, view of the opportunities that can be brought by collaboration across industry. Uh, there can be some really efficient solutions adopted. And again, just to say that there can be a completely um, new role, but also an exciting role for accountants, be it accountants in business and accountants supporting organizations externally to embrace this role and to support small companies. So collaboration is key and, of course, alignment with the executive board, with the executive team of small organizations is absolutely uh, crucial. Thank you, Alex. Uh, that was very helpful and uh, insightful into how uh, a less well-resourced smaller organization would uh, implement the sustainability reporting process. Um, so before we end today's session, I'd like to reiterate my very first point for today, and that is good collaboration is vital, um, not just within and across the organization, but also with external peers and other uh, experts in the industry. So there is no one size fits all model. And because of that, we encourage you to take time, work through the suggested processes of our sustainability reporting cycle, and then design processes which are appropriate to your organization and implement them. And so with that, we have come to the end of today's session. Uh, once again, I'd like to say thank you to Rachel and Alex and to you for watching. I also leave you with two actions. One, to watch the other recordings on collecting data and identifying material information to be disclosed, as well as on working with people and using technology as enablers. And two, to workshop the areas we have discussed today. Questions are available at the end of this recording and can be used in organizations by other educators in their learning programs. So thank you and good luck.